Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. You have reached the episode number 19, which is sex, lies, and questionable behavior. This episode was finally something interesting. It wasn't good. It wasn't like positive things, but at least a few interesting things happened during this episode. And uh, you know, I don't make you guys wait too long with a yap yap. Let's just get right into this review. I'm trying to understand why I have to keep seeing Claire in every episode now lately. Y'all are annoying me. Claire comes over to Emily's apartment and of course they're talking about the men that they didn't choose. So Claire's talking about how she is talking to Cameron again and acting like this is some kind of wonderful, great, amazing thing. Like they're gonna get back together or whatever. And she says, oh, it's, you know, it's not awkward, blah, blah, blah. And Claire, nobody cares okay emily gets to talking about brendan and she thinks that they've made a, a huge turnaround with this accident and all and she says and i don't understand why but emily says you know with everything that's happened i just know i want him in my life emily i'm gonna refrain from what i'm thinking right now because you get smarter towards the end of the um show okay okay i'm gonna refrain from what i'm thinking about this part right here so Claire asks Emily if her and Brennan had a chance to talk about, you know, the accident and all that stuff. And Emily says, no, not really, but I have made reservations to lightly touch on those topics so that we can talk about it. Now it is five days until decision day. So Becca says that decision day is coming and there's just so much still to figure out about their marriage. So they're at this clay pottery place. So Becca says that she's unsure if Austin likes her. Becca says that there have been moments when she's not sure if Austin likes her off camera. That is a damn shame. Becca says that he says he likes her, but the actions are not lining up with his words. Becca says that on camera, Austin puts on a great show, but when the cameras are off, she says it's not as much. Becca says that honestly, at this point, she doesn't even know who Austin is. So Austin says lately we've been experiencing some issues. Becca says that she thinks that she's having a lot of problem with the fact that when they do have deep conversations, it's only on camera. And then Becca says, it emotionally exhausts you and we never get to follow up on the conversation off camera. Becca says that she's unsure if Austin really likes her. And he says, well, you know, I like you. And Becca says, well, you can say that with your mouth, but your actions are saying something else. Austin says, I'm sorry you feel that way. I do want things to be better for us. And, you know, I have not mentioned this very much in all of the episodes that I'm doing for these recaps. I am so sick and tired of you guys overusing the word like. I'm sorry. I used I overused the word basically last week. And I am so apologetically sorry. You guys know that is very uncharacteristic of me to overuse a word. Usually when I have a word that I know that I keep using in a video, I'll edit that word out. So you guys hardly ever see when I'm like, um, which is a lot. I say, um, a lot. You just don't know. Cause I'll be cutting it out. When I tell you that in this episode alone, I promise you, if I have the time, I will count how many damn likes is in the show. In fact, it would be funny if I could just clip and snip and edit all the likes they've ever said throughout this entire season. I promise you it would be more than 300 times because these people do not know how to have cohesive conversation without using filler words. Guys, this is why you should read more, okay? And if you don't like touching the pages of a book like me, I don't love touching the pages of a book. I probably, I, I, I'm probably, I definitely have some type of sensory issue, but I don't like touching pages of a book. It, ir it irks me. So I listen to audiobooks, but you're still getting the information. You're getting the vocabulary. You're getting all of that in a book, okay? Austin says, I do like you. I just need you to trust what I say when I say it. And Becca says, you know, I want to trust what you're saying, but you know, those actions again, again. So Becca says, I know you like me as a person, but you know, I just don't know if you like me in that way. And Austin claims to like her in that way. And Austin says, I am sorry. Again, another freaking fake apology. I am sorry that I'm not good at expressing it to you. 
So Austin says that Pastor Cal at that meeting he had with us said that we need to trust in the little things and our intentions. He says, you know, in everyday conversation, and he thinks that it's been going better. He's saying that what's gotten better was the trust in each other's intention. And then he asks Becca how she feels about that. Like, does she agree? So Becca says yes. And she says, even today, I said something about the dryer door being open and that if you leave it open, it would get moldy and you didn't argue, you didn't put up a fight. And normally that would become a bone of contention that you would pick. She didn't say it like that, but I did. But you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh huh. Austin then says that he may disagree, but he doesn't disagree in a bad way. And then Austin asks Becca if she thinks his disagreements are combative. Becca says to Austin that he always needs a reason for things. He always needs this long drawn out reason. When she's trying to run out the house, she doesn't have time. And it's exhausting to have to keep sitting here and giving a long drawn out explanation for everything. And now I'm beginning to understand why every time you turn around, uh, Becca's trying to have this deep conversation. Uh, everything is becoming so clear to me now. The reason why Becca was always pushing for these deep conversations is because they only happen on camera. So when she had him on camera, she felt it would be the best opportunity for her to go ahead and attack those conversations. Everything makes perfect sense to me now. We have had Becca pinned as this woman who is sex hungry. She wants the, you know what, from you know who. But in all actuality, Austin is being a big fat fake and phony. And he's appearing one way on the show and another way behind closed doors when the cameras are gone for the night. Austin, you dirty mother freaking dog. I didn't give you enough dirty, dirty comments when I was on this show because I didn't know the scoop. I didn't know the skinny. I didn't know that you were a wolf in sheep's clothing. But now that I know, I got a lot of words for you in this freaking episode just to let you know. So Austin, you really went for a low blow here. And this is why folks, I'm going to tell you right now. And I used to think opposite of what I'm about to tell you guys. Don't be talking about exes and what you did with them and just don't just don't talk about your exes okay because it leads to freaking speculation from your new person so austin is here saying to becca you told me in the past that your exes were pushovers they were punks they were you know like he feels like she doesn't want him to think for himself he said and becca says i know that you're the type of person that thinks for yourself you think for yourself 100 percent. i just wish that a little percentage of that time you would think for both of us like for us like what's good for us and then Austin says, okay, which is very annoying. Okay. And Becca says, I'm not asking for you to be passive. Becca says that she doesn't know how to communicate that to him in a way that makes sense to him. And then Becca says, maybe she's asking for too much. And in that, if that is the situation, then she doesn't know what more to say. And now we have the hand of affection, the fake. Now I know everything, all of your movements are fake, Austin. Now I know all of your mother freaking fake movements. And you, you look at it's just so unrealistic. It's so unbelievable now to me that we just believed every single little affectionate thing you did. And I'm feeling really dumb because what Becca is saying is 100% true. We sit here and we watch people mistreat us or say things or do things that are opposite from the way that are opposite from the way that they're talking to us or that they're talking about us. And I feel dumb for believing Austin, honestly. He's a liar, apparently. You need to win a Grammy. Oh my, not a Grammy, that's music. You need to win an Oscar for your outstanding performance, Austin, because you, Mr. Quote, nice guy, was actually believable. It actually was truly believable. So Becca says to Austin that she's questioning things now because for him to say that her exes were passive and therefore maybe that's the type of man she wanted, she doesn't know what to say to that. She says that his feelings are valid. She doesn't want to let her emotions make her dismiss how he feels, but she doesn't know what she's supposed to say to that. And then unnaturally, and maybe this is just because this is reality TV and sometimes things aren't scripted in the middle of the conversation. She doesn't say, excuse me, I'm cold or anything like 
weird she just gets up as becca's getting up she says i'm cold let me get a jacket she said i'll grab yours because it's fleece lined austin says yeah sure get my jacket dirty and then becca puts his jacket back he's talking about it's fine and he's laughing like something's funny dude i mean i get you i don't want no clay on my jacket either but um i also knowing i'm going to a place where i'm going to be handling pottery and there's a chance i'm going to get that stuff on my coat that I love so much or my jacket that I love so much you can best believe I'm not wearing that jacket to the activity actually this is the part where Austin says I would just appreciate if you wash your hands before Austin she already has put your jacket back and she has her own jacket now so what is the point of then still saying I just would appreciate if you wash your hands before you touch my jacket she no longer has your jacket though and if she touched it and got it dirty, you talking ain't going to clean it, buddy. You ain't my buddy. I'm just saying. So Becca sits down when she has her jacket on and she says, I get why you don't want your jacket dirty, but that was very hurtful. And I'm shaking right now. I would be shaking. And why does Austin have his hand on her again as if they're in this loving, lovey-dovey moment? She's pissed at you. Don't touch me. Becca says to Austin, if you wanted my coat or anything, I would have given it to you, no problem. But you see, when you don't like someone and you're not feeling them like that, you're not trying to get your coat dirty for them. Okay, Becca, I'm just saying. So Austin says the jacket thing makes him look like crap, basically. That's what I'm assuming he said there. And he says just because he asked if she could wash her hands before handling his jacket... Um, Austin, if you don't want to look like crap, stop acting like crap. Stop being crappy. Okay. Anyway, Becca says that she didn't mean to make him look bad. And then the sad music plays and we go to the next scene. I be wanting to skip. <laughs> I be wanting to skip. I be wanting to skip certain parts so badly. And then y'all about to miss something super mother freaking juicy. Um, if you know that you have cameras on you in the living room, why y'all doing sexual things in the living room? Anyway, obviously they're not ashamed. Um, so let's just get into it. Basically, Chloe and Michael think that everything is going well. Dr. Pia is, and she says that both of them are very intimate sexual people. So Dr. Pia asks, how's it been going in the sexual intimacy department warning here's a warning gonna be here i'm gonna put a freaking warning screen here if you have children in the room you might want to usher them out put them to bed if you're a prude you might want to cover your eyes yes it's blurred but there's not too much left to our imagination chloe says that she says to michael that she needs an emotional connection with someone before she can have a physical connection with them Chloe says that both of them are very much into physical touch. Chloe says that they're kissing all the time, holding hands, touching all the time. And then Chloe says things are rapidly moving forward. Michael says that they've making sure to explore each other. Okay, so Chloe, I thought you said you have to have an emotional connection before you can connect your hand to people's sexual organs. Anyway, <laughs> y'all are grown. I'm not trying to shame y'all. Y'all married. Y'all can do what y'all want. And you can see what they're doing here. Um, you can assume where Chloe's hand is. And I, for one, could have done without seeing this. And Lifetime, I really do not like how sexual you're getting this year. I really don't freaking like it. So Dr. Pia asks, what is the next step? And Chloe starts making the porn music noises, the, the porn music sound effects. Like, girl, oh my God. Just say sex, please, for the love of God. I'm confused. Dr. Pia asks, what does that sound effect that you made mean? Chloe says she doesn't know. They haven't discussed it yet. That is a universal sound for sex, like in a porn. I mean, I think it is. And now you don't know. I'm already over this scene, okay? So Michael takes over and says that they both want to have an emotional connection before having sex but that's not what chloe said and then she got confused Alrighty then girl i don't really know 
what these people be thinking these scripts because you know i'm i just at this point everybody's everybody's on script and i'm over it so dr pia says you both are comfortable being in each other's presence and they said yeah and dr pia asks are they comfortable being naked in front of each other and they said yes chloe says she goes to bed naked Chloe, I don't believe you. Make, say something else that's more believable to me, please. So, Dr. P, you're just jumping right on into the sexual stuff. Anyway, I'm over this freaking con I'm really over this conversation, to be quite honest with you. Normally, I would have bypassed it, but there was just some interesting things I had to mention. So, Dr. P asks if they have masturbated with each other. You know, I don't know if a lot of you older folks are as old as I am. But do you remember when on television you couldn't say certain things like you couldn't even say the B word, you couldn't you couldn't say certain things. And now in 2024, we can use the word masturbate when in all in the family, they couldn't even say the word toilet. Man, have we come far, haven't we? Haven't we? Michael says that they haven't, but he wouldn't be against it. So I don't know what the reasoning is, but whatever. Dr. Pia gives them a homework assignment of going to a sex toy shop and picking out a couple of things to use. The idea is for the two of them to find three items that they would like to use together. And then she wants them to use the items to the best of their comfort level. What if their comfort level is zero because neither one of them are having sex and you want them to go to a sex shop when they've never had sex and you want them to buy sex toys to use on each other. Dr. Pia, what's wrong with you, girl? Because I noticed, I even noticed way back when you were doing those interviews, you talked a lot about sex. So are you the sexologist? Because I'm going to feel stupid if you're the sexologist and I'm just over here wondering and questioning. Anyway, can we please move on? I'm, I'm over it. Let's go. So Brendan says that there is a big disconnect for weeks. There was a big disconnect for weeks about what a friendship was versus a relationship. And he thinks that was getting blurred and the expectations were very high after the accident. Emily says that she's pretty sure that this wasn't supposed to be a friendship. She says to him, maybe you knew it in your head, but it wasn't communicated to me. Throughout this entire scene, Brennan is constantly sighing, rolling his eyes. I'm surprised he didn't suck his teeth. And then again, he might've, and I just missed it, but he's just all around rude and disrespectful. So Brennan sighs and says his actions were showing that he wanted a friendship. And he says he thought that was clear enough for her but obviously it wasn't. Emily says, you're the one that said that you hated mind reading. You broke up with a girlfriend because you said you aren't a mind reader. Well, guess what? I'm not a mind reader either. And she says, especially in this situation, she feels like she made it so clear that all she wanted was direct answers from the very beginning. Emily says she thinks that's a big deal. It was important, very important for Brennan to say to her whether he thought that or not. The way these people speak is so difficult. I don't know what she's referring to when she says you thought that or not. So please make up your own conclusions from what I just said. I said it in order. I'm literally reading word for word what they said in the captions because I did not summarize. I'm really, really sorry, but I'm still going to keep it short and sweet. All right. Brennan claims that he was trying throughout this relationship. No, you weren't. You freaking liar. All right. Emily says you believe that. That's what you believe but I don't feel that way. I don't believe that. And it doesn't mean that you have to agree with it, but she says she feels like after the honeymoon, something triggered him or whatever, and she was never given a fair chance. The relationship was never given a fair chance. Brennan's like, are we talking about what we learned from it? Or, you know, Brennan's always trying to control the conversation to gear it the way he wants to gear it. And Emily says, most girls in my situation would have been left. Okay, but I stayed. She says that she's glad that she went through that situation together, but she wouldn't have stayed if she didn't think that there was more. And she didn't want to break up at that point because she felt like there was going to be more growth in the relationship. And she didn't think that hitting a mother freaking tree with her head it was going to be the thing that changes the relationship. Here we go. Brennan is sighing again. So Brennan has the audacity to say, and I say that a lot in a lot of my reviews because that's just what I say because people have a lot of audacity. They don't have enough brains, but they have plenty of audacity. Brennan says, was it me staying or was it you convincing me to stay? Emily says anyone should have left, but she stayed. And she didn't think that it was fair for Brennan to take away her experience. And then Brennan says, which is why he stayed because he put Emily 
before himself. Oh, you're such a selfless man. You're like Jesus. You know what? Shut the hell up, Brennan. You're annoying. You're annoying. You're annoying and you're puffing yourself up more than you need to be puffed up because you are a freaking loser. Guess what? You went all these episodes trying to gear how people look at you and how they see you on television and you look like a hot steamy pile of turd that's what you look like right now you look so stupid you look so dumb right now in rihanna's words emily said if you didn't put put her before him she means we would have never been able to be friends brennan has the nerve to say this i can't even repeat it i want him to say it and i want you to hear him say it if I didn't listen to you, you wouldn't have almost died. So what? Brennan says we would have never been able to even be friends if I didn't listen to you and you wouldn't have almost died. We wouldn't have been out and you wouldn't have almost died. Emily asks Brennan if he's being serious right now and he's being dead serious because when you have a head of hot air, there's nothing to come out of that head. There's no brains, no brain matter. It's just air. It's like a hot air balloon. Okay. That's what you're looking at. A freaking human hot air balloon. And anyway, Brennan says to have it come to that, to the point where I almost lost you. He says, no, staying together wasn't worth it to stick it out. Brennan, you would have been happy as hell if she ended the marriage many weeks ago. I don't really know what you're talking about. If you lost her, you never wanted her. You can only lose something that you want. So I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You're gaslighting her to think you are the freaking savior of the world. You laid down your mother freaking life for her. There are producers all around you at all times. If you didn't call 911, you don't think anybody else would have? You get on my damn nerves. I swear to God, I don't even want to see your mother freaking face after this season is over. And I mean it. And I freaking mean it. Emily basically says, you can't even put those two things together to try to make them correlate. What the hell are you, like, what are you talking about? So now the food comes and they're back to getting along, it seems. That's weird. Anyway, Brennan says, can I, I just want to eat my steak for five minutes. So he doesn't want to talk. And Emily says, it really hurts my feelings that you don't want to talk about anything. So Emily says that she doesn't think it's worth going round and round, but she doesn't really think that he's giving it his all and she would like Brennan to elaborate on that like elaborate on I guess I don't know staying the way they talk is very confusing I'm really sorry I could rewind it five times read the closed caption slow and still sometimes what they say makes no sense so Brennan says in the real world you meet somebody you date them over the course of a couple of months and then you figure out if you want to be with that person me and you we were together 24 7. he said he's comfortable that he saw every side of emily and brennan now claims that he saw a few red flags here and there and he said there were red flags for chemistry and negativity and he said if it's one thing that is a huge deal breaker for him it is negativity Oh, guys, yes. Mr. Negative who likes to sigh when people are sitting there having a conversation with him who like to sit there and not want to talk and not want to acknowledge people and all this and disrespect Emily the entire time on almost every episode wants to talk about negativity. Isn't that something? Isn't that special? Isn't that special? Emily says, I am the most positive person there is and brennan says how she was always saying i hate this i hate that she didn't say i hate you which is what she should have said but i digress emily took the opportunity two weeks ago at michael and chloe's wedding and brennan says that chloe and michael's vows were beautiful and emily just destroyed them so we flash back here to emily where she says that their vows were very vanilla okay she says their vows were vanilla nothing was really memorable and Brennan says he couldn't believe how Emily could make something like that so negative. Brennan then says it was too much for him. Emily says that she is the most positive person. And there is the disconnect. She says this is just groundbreaking, you know, this information that she's getting. Brennan says before the accident, you don't think you were actually negative all the time? Brennan, what show are you watching? Oh, wait, you can't see yourself looking like a buffoon. She was never negative. 
She was always positive. And that one time that she did talk crap about the wedding, I didn't really like her comments. That's really the only time that I saw her being a little negative. But other than that, she's pretty positive, like she said. And then Brennan says, you don't think that saying hate all the time is negative? And Emily says, there was no negativity. So Emily is crying now, as you can see. And uh, she gets up, she steps away from the table and she goes into the bathroom. And she's crying and sobbing. And she's saying to the producer that Brennan thinks she's negative and Emily get your ass off that dirty bathroom floor and go tell him to kiss the lightest or darkest part of your entire butt that's what you need to go do right now that's what you need to be doing instead of sitting on the floor crying about what he thinks Emily is here she's talking to the producer and asking if she's overreacting and the producer says that she would never describe Emily the way that Brennan did and she was shocked to hear Brennan say that. So Emily says this is the worst thing that anyone could ever say to her and it's simply not true. She says that Brennan doesn't know who she is and she says something about he wonders why I am so effed up in the head. She said, girl, you don't let this man steal your self-confidence. I don't know what that, that line was about. I literally wrote it like word for word and I don't, sorry, I said like, didn't I? Sorry, so sorry, but uh, yeah. So Emily here is in disbelief. And while Emily's gone, Brendan is over here. And let me show you what he's doing. So who are you texting right now, Brendan? I'm curious. The world wants to know actually. And I noticed you put, you, you kind of hid your phone when Emily came back to the table. So in the meanwhile, we're back here with Emily and she's saying now she wants to know all of her quote red flags because now she knows that she never had a shot. As you saw, Brennan was texting someone. We don't know who it was, okay? But Emily, it's time for her to go back out there. Emily comes back and she says to Brennan, I wanna know what all my red flags are. And now he suddenly doesn't know. He, he could run off a list earlier, but now he suddenly does not know. Emily says that what he said was the most hurtful thing anyone has ever said to her. And it means that he doesn't know who she is as a person. And Brennan says that it's very hard for him to say those type of things because he doesn't want to hurt her feelings. Liar, you really don't care if you hurt her feelings, obviously. She literally sat in your face and was crying and you did not care. You know, you might as well have told us what you didn't find attractive about her because what you're doing now, gaslighting her, making her think you're the savior, making her cry is worse than if you would have just told her why you wasn't attracted to her in the first place. He was saying, Brennan was saying that he saw a different side of her after the accident and Emily says she was the same darn person okay and she says people would describe her qualities and characteristics not as negative but as the opposite and again that was the most hurtful thing he's ever said to her and for some reason I swear this is what she said word for word you guys are lucky because I usually summarize and I didn't I didn't have a chance to summarize because I told you guys that I was going to have this video up on Friday night. I got to be faithful. I got to be regular. Emily says that she doesn't deserve a lot. Go read it if you think I'm lying. This is exactly what she said. She says that she doesn't deserve a lot and, and then it cut off. So I'm assuming that what she was saying was what he said was unfair to her. Brennan says that he's just trying to be honest because you're asking and I'm telling you how it makes me feel when you say those words all the time. And Emily says, it means you don't know who I am. You never gave me the chance to fix something that clearly bothers you oh so much. And now Brennan is all, you know, he always, he's always trying to govern and lead the conversation. He needs to be mayor somewhere, mayor of bozos. But anyway, he um, says, okay, can we please talk about positives now? And Emily's like, you had all dinner to talk about positives, but here we are now. This is where we are. We are in positive land. You mean opposite of positive land, actually, if we're in opposite land, actually. Anyway, ignore that. So Emily says that this is the most hurt that she's ever felt this whole time, and it sucks. And that is how their scene ended. Now we're back with Becca and Austin, and Becca is clarifying with Austin that he's saying that he doesn't like the way Becca makes him look on camera. If you're not a certain way on camera, you can't appear to be that way on camera. If you come off like an a-hole, most likely you're an a-hole, Austin. That is not up to Becca's control. That's up to you. 
and your own actions. Austin says that he thinks a lot of the words that Becca uses to describe him puts him in a bad light. Austin says that her words imply that it is a lot worse than what is intended. Becca says to Austin that he's upset at her for making him look a certain way on camera. Not upset at her that she could never perceive him as that way. Becca says, but instead you're more worried about the optics and how it looks than about how she's feeling about the situation as you can read here. Austin says that he cares about her feelings, but it's, he feels that it's unfair to characterize him as this horrible, terrible person. Becca says that she has never characterized him as a terrible person. She's always saying good things about him, which is true. Austin says that when he has an opinion and it is not aligned with Becca's opinion, that's when he's seen as combative and mirroring what it seems to be mirroring Emily without even realizing it. Austin says that no one that knows him would ever say these things that Becca is saying about him, about him. Becca says that it hurts me that you care more about the optics than my feelings. So Austin says he cares about both. He asks Becca if he said anything to make her look bad in any way on camera. And she says, I'm not trying to make you look bad on camera. Austin says you are though. Becca says there's so many things that's happened behind the scenes that she stayed quiet about until now. And Austin asks, what is the solution? And Becca says she's really sorry but she needs to go to the bedroom. So Brennan has decided to go to his house and he left, which Emily says was very hurtful and unfortunate. They ended up not being able to focus on a lot of positives in the past two weeks or at all. And she says that she's in her head right now. And she says just when she thinks that it can't get worse, it does or better. Cause him being not being around is actually a better thing, Emily. Chloe and Michael are in the sex toy shop and I'm over it. Next scene. All right. So Claire is here with Emily and Emily says things didn't go as planned at the dinner last night. And she's telling Claire about how Brennan threw out this negativity thing last night, that bogus negativity thing. And she left dinner crying. So Emily says that it's sad, but maybe it's best for them. And Claire says she thinks that her and Emily have been through a lot. So Claire says she's tried to protect Emily the best that she could, but Claire says that she thinks there are things that are worth telling her. She says that she didn't want to tell Emily, but at the same time, she has to be realistic with what's going on and let her know what's happening. Brennan is being a piece of crap. Okay. So anyway, Claire heard through the grapevine that Brennan wanted to go on a double date with Cameron and that he's going on dates. You're cool as a cucumber with Cameron, apparently. And somehow you feel like this is okay, like for he, for him to even relay this message to you or whatever, however it happened, I don't know. Claire says that Brennan is not a good guy. She said she's upset that Emily even thought for a second that Brennan had her best interest at heart. Emily says she appreciates it so much and confirms a lot. She said that it confirms a lot of what she's been feeling and she's tried to look past it and see the best in Brennan and believe that that wasn't the case. Emily says Brennan doesn't respect her. And she didn't want to believe it, but the way he talks to her basically shows that he doesn't. So Emily says it's very sad. Claire says you deserve to be loved and be heard, to be seen, not diminished and not to be dismissed. It's not something that you deserve. So Claire says to Emily that Brennan is just not ready for commitment. And Emily says it sucks, but it also validates where she is now and where she's been. And Claire says that she's just sad that Brennan is not realizing how amazing Emily is. All right. So this review has gone on a very, very long time and I don't want to make this an hour long. So I'm not going to give you exact of what was said, but let's just say in this scene here, Emily is giving Brennan a piece of her mind, letting him know she's done taking his crap and she's done being his freaking puppet. She's done completely done. Brennan says that he'll come get his stuff and um goodbye sayonara adios whatever the hell else you want to use for the word goodbye and um that's all this scene was okay so the girls have a get together becca is explaining how austin is all about appearance and how she had no intention of making him sound or look a certain way by saying certain things on camera and she's saying how it's hard for her to put together the off-camera world and the on-camera world, how it's something that is very, very hard for her to get together. So Emily lets the girls know about the dinner and the fact that 
basically Brendan is claiming that she saved his life and at this point she's over it she let them know about the double date thing with Cameron and them they all are very supportive and uh looks to me like Emily's gonna be just fine so Becca is here with Lindsay and they have a heart-to-heart -heart talk about Austin again she used the word optics like 20 times no she I think she used it like four or five times and she's letting Lindsay know that he's all about caring about the appearance and how he looks on camera and Lindsay what it all boiled down to Lindsay said that if you were me and I was you and you were in my shoes you would have told me this is not the man for you because that adoration that you should have in a relationship is not there and Becca knows it and she's still trying to work on it but Lindsay is saying girl that's a red flag you need to be done with this man so now Derek at the same time Derek and Austin are talking and it's the same situation Austin though he feels like he has to change who he is to be with Becca which is not going to work for anybody and what it boiled down to in this conversation was Derek saying, you know, you got to put yourself first. Okay. This is all about you and what you need to do for your life to make yourself happy. Brennan comes to pick up his stuff and leaves. Goodbye. Went the nerve, had the nerve to want to have a conversation. And Emily said, I really don't have anything to talk about. He got his stuff. He left talking about wish you well. No, you don't shut the hell up. I hope you slip on some ice out there and slide all the way back to freaking Bozo land. Anyway, next scene. Well, what do you know? This is a married at first sight first. Um, Austin has also decided that he's going to leave about a couple, a couple of hours ago. Um, him and Becca had a conversation and what it boiled down to is that he wasn't happy. And Becca said that she noticed that when he came back from his outing and she came back from her outing, she realized that she realized the spark was no longer in his eyes. So he's out too. There's going to be nobody sitting in these seats for decision day. Can you even imagine? This is crazy. Becca says that she's hurt and she just pretty much is in a daze right now and uh, really doesn't know what's going to happen. And she just cannot believe that he's so focused on his appearance and is not at all focused on the relationship. And Brennan talking crap about how, oh, well, so unfortunate. We'll see what happens decision day. You made your decision. You moved out. Shut up. So Emma, I almost said Emma. Emily is feeling a little anxious because she has no idea what tricks out of his freaking magician's bag of delusions that Brennan is going to pull out at this daggone decision day. And I would be nervous, too, because he's a freaking abuser privately and he's an abuser on camera. That's a freaking mess. Now, Michael and Chloe, in the last four minutes, nobody gives a crap about you playing with your mother freaking toys. I know I don't care. So I'm over it. All right, guys. Um, that is the end of this recap. I really plan on, I really hope that this gets up Friday night because this was a pain in the ass to do. Literally had like so much freaking hours of footage. And I hope that I did a good job on this recap for you guys. Um, I do plan on doing a video. But I'm not going to get too much into it now because I have to post this video up. I will do another video, though, this weekend for you. Okay, so stay tuned. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.